Tell all you to would like to hold out and thank you, our faithful and committed brothers and sisters, who met our needs through prayer and financial support for our trip to India, Nepal, and Myanmar, which took place from July 24 to August 14, 2015. We saw thousands healed and set free from the money possession. And most importantly, we witnessed thousands who came to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. The deaf heard, the mute spoke, the blind saw, and the lame walked materially. We were ecstatic to see this early morning in the ruins of our town of India, half a missing eye Goa and Goki, where there was once an empty socket and a black hole, there was now an eye. This increased our faith to a new level. Your support and gave us to feed the thousands of people not only with spiritual food, but physical food. Our lives were in danger on several occasions. Due to threats from anti-Christ groups as well as anti-Christian militant groups, and we knew that risk of being put to death in the car. During our entire time, the car was radically moved off, rioting and killing anyone sick and driving alone. Even so, the shadow of the world, and we will not be able to take if not for your prayer. May I show the true belief in my own people who have never known of Jesus Christ and who will not even meet a Christian in their entire life. These people are considered unreached because they are completely cut off from the gospel. Because of your commitment to continuous prayer and financial support, now thousands of lives who were once unreached have not only heard the gospel of Jesus. But have accepted him as their Lord and Savior. In several of our training events, hundreds of pastors have now committed to taking the gospel of Jesus Christ to other villages. Ninety percent of the world's poorest people live among other villages, and in that Yeah. 
right? You saw how long that video take, right? You saw before I started to pray for him. You saw when I prayed for him, and you saw when he went down on the floor, right? So that's how long our good things now, but, right? Yeah, yeah, it's not as good. And um, understand God is not limited by, by the regulations that we have. I was going to say, that's about a few weeks ago, uh, when we were in the UK, about three weeks ago, a few Thursdays ago, three Thursdays ago, um, people were not healed. Somebody messaged me to say they were getting deliverance. They said, that's because I started to speak. They, they were publish that they were Now, I wasn't preaching about deliverance yet, but just the power of God and the presence of God. And if you forget everything that I share today, because uh, I'm going to share a lot, I'm going to share some of the places we go and some more testimonies and stuff. But I want you to understand that relationship with the Holy Spirit and just spending time with God and fellowship with the Holy Spirit is the most important thing you can do. Right? The mission, or the mission, Sister Roxanne has a, I don't know if you wrote that song? Oh, that was all okay, cool. That, that song was, was really good. But that mission, that's the goal, that's the job. Right? But the employer wants us to spend time with him because it's not a good employee relationship. It's a father, son, or father, daughter relationship. We are sons and daughters of God. Yeah. And we need to work from that place, not from a place of I am a laborer or I am a good. Yes, we are co laborers together with Christ. And the word laborer is used pray for that God said more laborers, but He sees us as sons and as daughters. And which father or son, you know, or mother would want a relationship with their children? Right? So He's, he's more concerned about relationship with you. And here's the secret when we have relationship with Him, we get his heart. And then we don't have to have a mission Sunday. Then we don't have to have a, an evangelism program. You know why? Because then we do it on our own. Amen. Then we do it when we go to the gas station. Then we do it when we go to the bank. Then we do it when we go to the supermarket. Right? It becomes a natural flow and not an event. Yeah. Right? I'm not saying don't do it. Or you need to organize things out there. And I must commend the church. I saw you all had a, a sale sometime there recently in order to assist families with hampers and stuff and I must commend you for doing that because we give on hampers since I'm just going to show you some pictures like that and stuff but since March last year we give on hampers and stuff thousands of families and we see how people live in Trinidad and it's not it's heartbreaking you can let it crazy for me this is this girl this girl can walk let's go down and go down she her foot was shaped like you let us see this is in 2019 in Malaysia right and not all of the countries and stuff, right? But she couldn't walk and I had no faith that she would be healed. So I said, wait till after the service and I'll pray for her. And her parents brought her to me. And I prayed for her. And then the was, I said to the parents, I said, God doesn't heal her, don't, don't feel bad. And the Holy Spirit will be me. Said, Stefan, he didn't even check to see if she was healed. And this is what happened, right? She stood up, she couldn't stand up on her own. So I'll walk in just now. And I'm asking her mom what she could do. She couldn't stand up on her own, she's standing there, she's walking slowly, and I'm asking her to run. Here is what you want. Fast, fast. Mass, is it? Come back, come back. Fast, fast, fast. Right? That's a service in Malaysia. Uh, because I look Indian, they carry me to a church with people from India. Because I look Indian. So you find, you find, I find that very interesting now. I went to Finland and I ministered to people from Pakistan and I ministered to a church with people from Africa. But up to now I ministered to no European people in Finland, right? <laughs> um, it's just interesting, but this girl, you know, you know, I thought they had zero feet, you know, people so don't say, well, so I don't think this girl understood what's happening. I don't think she had any faith, one. I don't think I had any faith. I can tell you I had no faith because God was moving in the service, right? And when they brought it to me, you, you can imagine somebody for shape like that, I see. Right? So I see it, right? So I said that. Nah. I said, tell him, I said, wait till after the service. And that's after the service. Right? So I have no faith. This girl has no faith and God healed her. Right? But it's about him. It's about what he wants to do. Um, I went to the video in South Africa. Um, from 35 minutes back. Two Wednesdays ago on Zoom. And I'm sharing this so that don't know him in God, right? Missions have not stopped. The work of the Holy Spirit has not stopped. Um, even before COVID, I was doing deliverance over what's happening in your calls. Right? Somebody from America was willing to fly to come to Trinidad and come to pray for them. Right? Because their daughter wanted to, to kill herself and her sister with a knife. Normal girl. Right? And the Holy Spirit revealed to me what happened. 
And once I realized what happened, um, it was easy to deal with that. Over the phone, I tell them, get a plastic bag. Over the phone, eh? this is before COVID, this is a few years ago. I'm praying on the video and people with the anointed knows no, the Holy Spirit, there's no distance in prayer. You know what I say all the time? But there's no distance in prayer, right? So, yeah, go ahead. I'll just wait for you. Five minutes. Are you trusting God for healing? No. That's a lot of life. That's what I'm Right. So this is this is a past in South Africa asking the minister like a week, Monday to Friday. For half hour every day, he have a service. They are six hours ahead, right? So it's 12 to 10 to 1 hour time. And I forgot that he had taken prayer requests. And I, I turned back over to him. And when he was closing in prayer, he actually prayed for the prayer requests. But then I said, Pastor, if people are on the call, on the Zoom, could I pray for them? One was for somebody exam, one was for a job, and one was for healing. That was the three prayer requests. And this person, I want to show you where to look at. Uh, you're looking at my street, but not really my street, isn't here? And it's really small here. Yeah, you can double click on the screen up there. Yeah, it will be much bigger. Yeah, but you're at this screen here. Yeah, you're probably like a mouse. Okay. Right. So it does play. I'm going to listen to the conversation. Right? This person wants to death. Are you just open supernatural doors of God? Father, we pray, oh God, that they will not have anything. That they will look to you as the source, not any job, not any company. But yes. you are the provider, you are the source, and that you will do it for them as well. We just declare it the right in Jesus' name. Amen. And uh, who was the person? I think it's Vicky who said you didn't even have it on. Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, which person is the even? Is it? Okay. What's the. Is it? Wow. What, what is the. Uh, is the profoundly there? Okay. In both ears? Totally? Or both ears. Profoundly there. As in totally, 100%. Yes. That's correct. Can you, can you put your hands on his ears for me? Both, both if you can. So maybe you can face it, maybe. Or, yeah. So, Father, we just pray. We just pray that you open his ears in the right now. Supernaturally, in the background. Now you will see, Lord, you will just touch him and pray to every hair drum, everything that is to be created. And then you will do it with the Holy Spirit. Now you will talk. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Maybe can you check in? So I took about 20 seconds to pray, right? I just got a time again. It took about 20 seconds to pray, right? She's in South Africa. My son was born there. That he's 14 years old. I asked if he was deaf. She said he was profoundly deaf. Meaning he can't hear a thing. He was born like that, right? And that's how long I prayed for 20 seconds, right? Go ahead. Anything? Anything? Who takes him? He could be clear. He could be clear. He could be clear. He could be clear. Click twice, and you hold up his hand like this. Right? Keep watching. And what's the one? And then the camera and everything? You heard your click, sister? Yes, I think it's an emergency. Did that? Could you do that before? No. You mean before just now you can hear your click, right? Now you can hear your click, right? That's what you're saying. Can you do a different number? Can you do like three and see if he hears you? Yes. <laughs> oh. Right? If you look, you'll see Aliyah, the one that called, right? You'll see Alicia, Laura, Aliyah, the one that called, right? Uh, you also have it? Yeah. Right? He was born there, and she's asking me now, could I pray for her other son who's also there? Right? He was not that tall, right? But uh, God can do anything, yeah. right? Did I pray and fast the night before? No, did I pray and fast for 40 days and 40 nights? No, right? I'm not saying don't pray and fast around me because we like to equate things and things. Because I do this, God moving this way. I tell you how it's very, very tired that day. The baby had me up the night before, right? And I was tired that morning and Alicia and my wife had to go in the hospital. And uh, if you had been watching that video, you'd see I was by my mom. 
I might want to pay my Mako to see she come in the camera and watch to see what happened in the Zoom, right? But God is not limited by our shortcomings or what we feel we need to do for Him to move. But because He's a good Father, because He wants relationship with us, because He wants to show His love to that man in South Africa, He showed up in that way. It's not because I earned it or did anything, right? Uh, skip, let me see. Go this is in Trinidad. Um, but yeah, this is my 2019 January, I think. Yeah, 2019 January. This boy was deaf in one ear, and he came to our service and he was healed. Right? So it's not just on the mission field. I'm showing you people that say, well, before you say, go away and see miracles. Well, this is in Trinidad. Right? I was on Zoom and God did it in South Africa. Right? Uh, this man was also deaf in one ear, and he got healed. Right? This is my wife, she's a medical doctor, as soon as she touched this woman, this woman had a tumor in her stomach in my mouth. And she went to many doctors who could not help her, but my wife was a medical doctor, as soon as she touched this woman, she started to vomit and get the difference. And the next time we went there, a few days later, this woman stood up and testified how oh, she went to many doctors, nobody did help her. But as my wife prayed for her, God supernaturally healed her. So God is a doctor to heal her supernaturally, right? This, Okay. Right. This is some of the places we go. You see in Myanmar in Orange, I don't know if you all can see the names of the countries. Myanmar is in Orange, Thailand, and I said, next day, go down. This is a zoomed in map, so on the left, the white is Myanmar, and on the right, the green is Thailand, and we cross the river. You see that river in the middle? So we go from the green to the white to get to the yellow dot, right? We take this boat. Right? She works for time in ministry with myself. 
So this is a new, this is pasta pizza and uh, pasta or vanilla. Just go back to the hot, the filter and so. Um, right, just to explain this picture. The change the wooden structure now, but it's more or less the same idea, but outside of this picture there are more believers. Every single person outside of this photo for a 14 village area is a Buddhist. Right? Go back to Peter. So this is Pastor Peter and his wife Nancy and Pastor Willem. And we sponsor 15 children in Lana. Right? Uh, Seven dollars a month to sponsor a child. This is my wife. Jesus Christ is the healer, but they were saying, I'm out there, man. 
I'm a sorcerer, right? Go back to Sabia. So this family in India, uh, he heard that they needed food, and they wanted to kill themselves, and he gave them a food hamper. You know, he witnessed to them, they accepted Christ, and they wanted to be baptized immediately. This family here, right? Go down one. This, so that pastor is in charge of 10 pastors in India. This picture was taken in India in 2019. And they planted several churches. Now we support them from Trinidad, right? So we sent to Myanmar from Trinidad. We sent to India from Trinidad. Right? Um, nobody would support the lady on the left because she's a woman. She's a pastor, but she's a woman. I said, so you can't raise support because he raised support for the pastor. So we sent money for him, and he raised money for the other pastors. See how that works? We sent for one and one get for nine. Right? Multiply. Right? And I said, so what about her? You can't get money for her, nobody will give why she's a woman. In India, you cannot know the gender or sex of your baby uh, with a bunch of song because people have abortions if it's a good. So it's illegal to know what you're having before you have the baby. So only when the baby is born, then you know what you have. Yeah. So you have to buy white clothes and color neutral, uh, neutral colors until. Right? So we don't go back, sorry. So we sold a hundred of these bags. I don't know if you have any left. I think it's not my name. Uh, we sold some of these bags and we were selling them for $50, a donation of $50, and the money was going back to them. The problem with that is we need to travel there to get the bags and come back to sell it. So since 2019, we haven't been back, right? And this is a tailor and center. We have to teach women to sew these women for one dollar. You said we sent money to hire a teacher every month, and she evangelizes to them and we have baptism every six months. Every six months is a cycle. Hey, right, great. So, I want to preach a little bit if that's okay. <laughs> right? Um, as I was praying, you know, I shared, I shared some of what the Lord did, and I shared some of what was happening recently as well, because it's not just about going on a plane, and it might look that rough to you and stuff. Trust me, it's not. Uh, people say, I want to go on a trip with you. Once you want to sign, and we have to India with us. Um, I didn't go set the team. But um, once you want to sign a form that says, if you die over there, you're willing to let your body be very way where it is. You know, you can go with us, I don't have to uh, Acts chapter 13, verses 1 to 4. But again, I'm like, there's something big, right? But as a believer, when you say, God, I give you my life. You see, if you understand that Jesus Christ is Lord and He died for us, right? Then going over there in the jungle is no big, no big deal. Because Christ left that one and He came to do it. And He was willing to die. And it wasn't easy for Him because He said, Father, this cup could be being taken from me. Nevertheless, that what? Not my will, but die be done. So, yes, I want to sleep in my bed with the air condition. But I will sleep on the car from there. And I, I don't like um, cockroach or anything. I do not like approach I think. And look, look what God said to me. My wife likes to hike and stuff. Me, if I can drive and get there, I will drive and get there. I don't go through that. Right? Unnecessarily. That is fun for my wife. Right? She likes that kind of thing. And God, God chose. He, he does stuff like that. Right? Um, Acts chapter 13, the first, the first four verses. It, you know, um, anybody can read it. What's your Bible? Anybody with a low voice? Now there were in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers, and Barnabas and Simeon, that they, they was called leader, and Lucius of Cyrene and Manen, which had been brought up in Herod, the Tetriarch, and so on. And they ministered to the Lord and fasted. The Holy Ghost said, Separate me and Barnabas and so on, for the world prayer to I have called them. And when they had fasted and prayed, they laid hands on them. And they sent them away. So, yes. so they being sent forth by the Holy Ghost, he parted unto Seleucia and from thence they sailed to Cyprus. And they ministered to the Lord and fasted. The Holy Ghost said, Separate me and Barnabas and Saul, for the good work to I have called them. They ministered to the Lord and fasted. That's what you can James say, right? And this is how we start. This is how everything that you see happen started. Right? This is the first mission trip in the Bible. Right? Nobody knew who his name is still sold in the church of Paul. Yeah? You see Barnabas name first. 
So it's like saying, God said, uh, Stefan and Laura. You know me, but you don't even know Laura. Some of you know me, you've seen me before, etc. But you never really see Laura, right? I'm only known one, right? If two of us go to every church in Trinidad, they will more recognize me, right? So that's who part of us was, understand? So of us nobody, but they will minister to the Lord and fasting. And if the Holy Spirit spoke, you all know who uh, John G. Green was? You all know that guy? There was a play in like in South Africa. Long ago, when you got filled with the Holy Spirit and you spoke in tongues, they used to say, oh, you're something like Chinese, we're going to send you to the China to China to be a missionary. Oh, you're something like Africa, and we're going to send you to Africa to be. Based on all your tongues, something, they would send you on the mission field. Right? Then you're judging it, got a call to go to South Africa. And there was a plague, a kind of more plague it was killing people throughout the whole nation. And members of his church were that, and he got tired, he got fed up. And he said, Lord, I want you to use me to heal people from this plague. And it would, I think it was very similar to the coronavirus. It would come in, it, when you come in contact with people, you know, get it, right? And when he touched people, instead of he getting the plague, they got healed. Right? He brought people back to life and stuff, right? As well. Generally speaking, like all the time, right? Uh, that was normal. That is normal. Right? I've met people who died and came back to life. One on one person. Right? When you go in there, stuff, these things are normal, right? Because um, they don't understand time. We will just pray for our long takes. That's the problem with us. We didn't just pray for our three hours, one night, and stuff. Right? Um, but John G. Lake, when he laid hands, scientists and doctors came and examined him. Like, how come your church have no more deaths and everywhere else have deaths? And they took a microscope and they looked at his hand. And when the germs came into contact with his hand, the germs died because of the anointing of him. Right? But praying and fasting, spending time with the Holy Spirit, they will minister him until you understand this was a prayer meeting eh? in Acts 13. Right? And I tell you, by like order of like the most known Barnabas, Simeon, Lucius, right? Manian, right? And so alas, the newest conflict. New new person on the block, right? And, this, and the Holy Spirit said, separate unto me, Barnabas and Saul. God requires our best. Understand the Holy Spirit didn't choose two people who was doing nothing in church. There were two people who was busy serving. They were doing ministry already. That's all their names here, you know. The people are doing nothing, their names not here. <laughs> right? And this is where they were first called believers. Right? Not here. Right, Christians. And uh, verse 4, and when they had fasted and prayed, the pastor said, No, God, don't take my best members, don't send them away. Take anybody else. Or when God when God told me, God told me, give away all my money as I share. And I sat down and I cried in the car. Then I went and withdraw all my money and give it up. Right? And he told me to give it up, give it up. Who was going to the job? God requires the best from us as a church, as an individual. He requires our best. Right? See, separate from me, man, but I told him I read that normal. That's not normal at all. That's a big deal. And, so, and, and verse 4, so, verse 3 and 4, they thought, and when they had fasted and prayed and laid their hands on them, they sent them away. That was the training. That was the Bible school. Now we understand, they were disciples and stuff before. But that's what they needed the impartation of the Holy Spirit. They did the call from God and they got. Pray for on their hands. Paul told Timothy, do not neglect the gift. Do not neglect the gift that was given to you by the laying on of hands of the presbytery or the elders. So there's something with laying on of hands and gifts. But God can heal without laying on of hands as he saw, right? But there was a transference of the anointing. There's a transference of the Holy Spirit on their life. And was so, so they are being sent forth by the Holy Ghost. Departed. I'll tell me where they went. And the first missionary trip began. That's important. They left one time. You, they prayed for them. They left. How many of us will do that? If God prays for you and you hear a country, you will to go. Because that's literally what I do. Oh, they might think I'm crazy, they might think I'm mad. Right? That's literally how this thing started. And then we don't have all the pictures, and then God connects us to people, and then we figure out, oh wow, God, I didn't imagine we'd be doing some of these things. 
I had no vision for these things. My mind was God will have me to do. But it came from spending time with him. It came from spending time with him. Five scriptures I want to leave you with. Matthew 28, 18 to 20. Um, I tell you to read it after and you can take a ask me after it. Right? Mark 16, 15 to 20. Luke 24, 45 to 49. John 20, 21, Matthew, Matthew, Acts, Acts 1, 8. Y'all know, anybody know what any other scriptures say? Mm-hmm. It's the same thing repeated five times. Go and make disciples of all nations. Right? Be witnesses, Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, the ends of the earth. Right? Go and preach gospel to all the world. You shall be hands on the sick and they shall recover. Right? This is guarantees from God. But he's just looking for people who say, I want to go. We are not this shit. I love you from the world. This is in price class, so you see the sign say everyone. Face mask. Are the eyes good? Um, right? And I have a very tiny right in computer short survey. Hold on. Same thing, three face masks. This is outside the campus app, so we did it a couple of times. But when I go out to send all to the children, pray for people, right? I would ask people, the people say, What's the survey? Do you know Jesus loves you? Can't be great for you. End of survey. You think people came for free face masks? This is true after they think people came for free face masks? Yes! I know we went Montaigne by the grocery. Everybody is for grocery Montaigne. Right? And people came with us. And yeah, all people. And. What am I? Thank you. How long will you say? Three years? How long will you say? Three this guy was walking towards me. And I saw him limping as if he had a shock. I said, Uncle, I want every face mask. He said, Yeah, I said, You have a stroke? I can pray for you. I see like you have a stroke. He said, No, it's not a stroke. He got shot in his hand three years ago. I said, Can I pray for you? And I held his two hands. Yes, it's moving, but I held his two hands and I prayed for him. And he started to sweat. But his son was just fine in the evening. He started to sweat in public. This is not in that church. I said, If you're not here, he said, Yeah, I said, There's a call. See what he goes. And, and I said, as I pray, he raised his hand, and he said, because before he started to raise his hand like this. And then he saw him in the video, right? He was raising his hand. We can play again, with no audio. He's raising his hand on his own. Right? Like this. He's raising his hand on his own, and I said, I called him back in January. That was like September, October last year. I called him back in January. He said, I'm right. Enter the church I was preaching in. He gave his life to Christ, he's going to church now, he's serving God. But when I called him, he said, Pastor, he said, since you prayed for me, he said, I'll pick up cut grass and earn money. And I think about every person in the Bible, Jesus prayed for who was blind, who was lame. And it would well, not just heal physically, you know, emotionally, that does something to us as a person. Instead of begging, I can don't work and earn money. That does something to yourself, esteem to yourself. And Jesus cares about the whole man, but all of this started because you know why I was praying and fasting last year. God, what you put me to, to, to spread the gospel in Trinidad. And the Holy Spirit gave me this idea about the face masks. You know what it costs us? Zero. I called people and said, hey, I hear you making face masks. You can donate 10. I called somebody else. I hear you making face masks. You can donate 10. I asked somebody, you can buy 10 face masks for me. I know we put traps in the bag and we see you in the bag. So to get the mask, you have to get the trap. Mm-hmm. Right? At least you have to read something before you throw it away. If you want to read it. Right? And the Holy Spirit is to give me that idea. Because I was praying. I wasn't necessarily fasting, I was praying and waiting on God. And yes, we can have programs and we can plan programs without waiting on God. So this is something that I planned. I didn't plan, but God told me to do it and I never repeated it because we saw people healed, we saw people delivered from drugs and different things, and the Holy Spirit touched people in the open. This is why churches were closed, this was happening. We did it this year too, right? Yeah. Did it earlier this year as well? But this is the idea you can take as a church and do. It's not copyrighted. The idea is from the Holy Spirit take. Yeah, I want you to take it and copy it. I don't know what you can even do with it. As I need to be all in the taxi. Hey, I'm going to pay for the fare today. You give me five minutes at a time. Right? I have these face marks for the one. Where's he catch? Nothing. I just want to tell you about this man called Jesus. He loved you and he died for you. I can pray for you. And as you pray, you ask God, God, what to tell them, what, and God will tell you things about people. 
He will tell you things supernaturally about people, but spend time with him. That's how you get to know his voice. In the secret place, in the prayer closet, in the prayer room. That's, that's where everything starts. That's if you will, everything. I know, and I will confess, I know what it is like to be in ministry and be running on empty. So I'm not perfect, but I'm not coming to a place that I pray all day, every day, no, I need to spend more time in prayer. But that is, I know it's special on Sunday, but that's what I want to leave with you all, I to minister unto the Lord, to pray and fast and hear what God would say. Amen? Could we all stand? Father, we thank you for every person here today. We thank you that you are the love God, you are the liver of God, you are still alive. We thank you for your presence even right now, Holy Spirit. The team and I have no time is against us. So what the team and I will do, we will stay back after the service. And anybody who wants prayer after the service can visit us. And we will stay back and pray for you in the yeah? So Father, we thank you even right now. What with you? I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand or anything to indicate, but when you make, I want you to make two decisions right now, two commitments, I should say. I want you to commit to spending time with the Holy Spirit. Spending, let me say, an hour for the next week, one hour over the next seven days, just with the Holy Spirit, fellowship with the Holy Spirit. I'm not talking about praying and asking God for things. I'm not talking about praying about what you need or praying for anybody. Just spending time worshiping, just spending time listening to him, just reading this word, whatever it is, just spend time for one hour in the next week, just with the Lord. If I sound strange, if I say it flat to me, that's okay. Not everybody here is flat. Trust me. And the other thing I want to commit to, and if you do more than one hour, I'm just saying that now I want to commit to share the gospel with somebody, with at least one person. It can be a friend, it can be a family member, it can be an enemy, it can be a stranger. Share the gospel with one person, please. I gave you some idea yesterday. Tell somebody Jesus loved them to ask them, can I pray for you? But it's when we spend that time with God and we would want to do that naturally. So Father, we thank you, oh God, for every person who is sick in their body. We heal every arthritis, heal every joint pain. Right now, in the name of Jesus, he can have a sheep to do the Lord. So, heal every person who is sick in their body. But I pray for a fire to be kindled, oh God, in each person, oh God, that they will want to share their faith, Holy Spirit. That they will be challenged, oh God, to share their faith. That will be challenged to spend time with you. That we will understand that it's from the prayer closet that missions come. It's from the prayer closet that evangelism comes. It's from time when the Holy Spirit that these things happen, oh God. And I pray that we would use us, that we would not, Father, we need on our commitment that we are making today, oh God, but that you would go with us with boldness and there will be testimonies from today. So give us boldness, Father. Give us you, Holy Spirit, more than anything else, oh God. We want you, we want fellowship with you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And amen. As I hand over, you know, we'll be here if you want my contact information and stuff. We have a table here, we have some items on sale. You can, you can hear some testimonies and stuff here. Some of what we do, you can come and support me what we do. There's a mission sports if you're interested in a flash drive. Come and talk to me about it if you're interested in that as well. Father, we are thank you. Thank God for for you, Step One. We we thank God for your service today. May I bless you quickly? At this time, we want to take out our mission our offering. I will I will call back the team and use this time. So why not take out uh, the offering? I'll use this time to say thank you, Brother uh, Step Four. I know Step Four in a while now. But one thing, when he ministers, he's just always on point. And uh, you know, as a, as a leader, support. We know God, but it's good when when God is telling you a particular thing, and there are so many things you could have spoken about, and we didn't talk. And you come and speak God's heart, and your heart, and my heart, and God's heart connected. And you said something that I'm glad you said. Sometimes it's good to hear it from somebody else because we, it, it, it gives us that assurance that that is God's heart for that woman at this time. You know, and uh, you 
said some things that they already connect with some things God has allowed me to prepare for, for, for next year. You know, let's spend time with God. Let's spend time. Here's where the mission start because I get a strong body and you know the word the word became flesh, flesh and embody the word. And when we spend time, we don't have to plan an event to carry on mission. Don't plan an event to evangelize, but evangelize. We will embody it in our flesh. You know, and I really thank God um, for the ministry. I, I say this boldly, and I say this with the backing of this assembly. We will definitely be partnering with you. And I, and, I, and I know certain things you said, I, I see. But all watching the hearts of the people say, yes, I can give that sense to that good, that sense to that good, that one person. You know, we will be partnering with you. Some of us will go, some of us will go, but we definitely can pray and give. And I just want to pause the joy and prayer as we lift up. Let's step on this team at this time. I think it's only fitting that we pray, we pray for them. As much as we will give, we really want to, to pray for him and his team. So let's stand again and join the Lord as we have to believe. I don't want to get excited to see the hand of God and see that little girl running and see that what we are hearing. And that's awesome. That's awesome. That's awesome. Father of God, we give you thanks. We give you praise. We thank you, God, for this team. We thank you, God, for the vision that you have placed within your servant together with each person that will be a part of his team as they go and they serve wherever throughout the nation. God, you have called them for such a time as this, God. We know, Father, that they too will have needs. They too will have desires. They too will have their battles and their challenges. But I thank God that they serve a God. And greater is he that is in them than he that is in the world. And as they go, they will make disciples. As they go, they will serve. As they go, lives will be transformed for your honor and for your glory. We thank you, O Lord, for the anointing that you have placed on each one of their lives, dear Father. We thank you for your love that is placed within their hearts. And as they go, what a compassion and love, as Sister Roxanne sang, with compassion and love, with compassion and love, with compassion and love, grace and truth will be disseminated to the lives that will be transformed because of their service. God, today we come against every plan and strategy of the enemy to distract, to destroy. But God, we thank you for every resource necessary that you would place within their hands to be used for your honor and for your glory. God, pour in to his bosom, pour in to their bosom, God, and they will never that they will, they will as, they, as they give, as they receive more, they will always be able to upgrade their giving and to upgrade their giving and to upgrade their giving. Men and women will come from all over the world and continue to pour in to them so that they, oh God, can pour out to men and women and the families to be impacted by your, for your honor and for your glory. I pray, oh God, a special prayer his wife and his daughter at this time. God, I thank you for your hand upon this family. God, you know the cares of this world. It's real. But God, I thank you for the focus, vision that you have given him and his wife, God, to continue to run this race. And as this baby girl look at mommy and daddy, there will be a fire even from now on within that I have to serve this Jesus. I have to go and make disciples. I pray every plan of the enemy that is sent up because he knows the plan of all you have for the little baby girl that she will grow in the fullness. She will be better. She will do more than her parents. And your name will be glorified in their lives, in Aliyah's life, in Laura's life, in Anusha's life, in the, in the entire team 
and they serve you for your honor and for your glory. In Jesus' name, we pray. Thanks, Amen. Amen. Right? 